Hey, Margie here. Have you noticed that your hair is thinning or that when you take a shower, more hair is coming out? Well, if that's the case, you absolutely want to listen to this episode because we're talking about hair loss and natural approaches. And the interesting thing is that so many of the root causes of hair loss are also root causes of osteoporosis. And when you address them, great things can happen, including improving your hair. And our special guest today is Julie Olson. And Julie is a triple board certified functional medicine nutritionist whose mission is to help women worldwide restore their health, hope, and hair loss naturally so they look and feel their very best. With more than 10 years of experience and success stories, Julie is known to skillfully investigate, discover, and communicate root cause resolution to revitalize health and naturally regrow hair. Julie has used these same strategies to personally overcome her own health struggles of hair loss, digestive issues, fatigue, and autoimmunity. And today we discuss the root causes as well as some of the natural treatments we can all use. So it's full of great information. Stay tuned. Welcome, Julie. I'm really happy to have you here on the podcast. This is a topic that affects so many people. And I think the sad thing is that people think hair loss is just inevitable. Oh, you know, I'm getting older. My hair is thinning. And they don't realize that it could be a symptom and that there's so much to do. So I'm really excited to have you and really enlighten everybody to all the possibilities. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this conversation. You know, the interesting thing is that many of the root causes of hair loss are similar or the same as bone loss. And so often I'll see people and I'll ask them and, you know, oh yeah, you know, but they don't, they don't put it together that maybe one of the underlying root causes is effect. Because sometimes with osteoporosis, it's silent. You don't, you don't know but they're having hair loss and other issues. So why don't you share the most common underlying root causes you see when it comes to bone loss? And not right, bone loss, when it comes to, when it comes to hair loss. what are the underlying root causes that you see with hair loss? Right. And before I, I, I go into that, I just want to say that it's actually a gift to have hair loss. It's not a disease. But it's a symptom and it's a sign that something is out of balance under your, under the hood, per se. And like you said, um, bone loss, it, you can't see it. So hair loss could actually be a gift, especially for these women that don't even know they're having bone loss. And so then they might actually do something about it, as I did. Like I, I when I, before I got into this field, I didn't realize I was a hot mess. I mean, I really was a hot mess, but it wasn't until I lost my hair in chunks <laughs> that I finally paid attention to it and figured out that there's something I can do about it naturally. I went from doctor to doctor and they're like, oh, there's nothing you can do. You're just getting older. You're under stress. Um, here, you can take some drugs and they'll, they're like lifetime drugs or serums, Rogaine or what have you. Um, and they're not guaranteed to work anyway, but we we don't know what to do. They basically just dismiss me. So um, I'm turning this around. I'm really on a mission to help women worldwide not have to go through what I went through to to address it when they are losing more than 100, 150 hairs a day for multiple months. You want to address it. It's definitely something underlying in your body that's out of balance. But if you don't address it, it can get to the point where there's scarring of the hair follicles. Then it's almost nearly impossible to regrow hair. So again, it can be a gift and an opportunity. And to answer your question now, there's- oh, Wait, we actually, over... before you answer my yeah. question, you just, you just opened <laughs> up a whole can of, I just want to say, I think you, you really hit on something so important is that a lot of times, I think the majority of people will give something to, to mat to affect, to, you know, to just address the symptoms, like you said, but you said something very important that by doing that, you can actually make it worse. So you want to just go a little deeper into that piece, because that's something I don't think people realize that by putting the medication on and not addressing the root causes, 
I know you just go into uh, that a little bit. Sure. More. I mean, I, sure. Um, let's take minoxidil or Rogaine. They're the, the same thing. So um, it can, it can work. Um, but again, it's a band aid. It's not getting to the root cause. And when you stop it, you, you lose all the hair that you gain, that you maintain or gain per se, or if you can, it doesn't work for, for everyone, but it's in small print and you lose all your hair. So, I mean, it's a lifelong, it's like a lifelong sentence. And it's all these, I mean, you're losing your hair because your body's under stress. You have toxins, you're, you're out of balance. So that putting those medications either on your, topically on your scalp, or there's plenty of medications you can take for hair loss, but they don't get, address the root cause, just like bone loss. And they put a, a more stress on your symptom, on your, on your system, on your body. And it makes it worse in the long run. And yeah. I, that's why I'm, I'm just really seriously on a mission because just being dismissed over and over as I was. And I was, I was struggling, but I knew there had to be a better way. And I did a ton of research and I've helped a lot of women um, because it is something out of balance in your body. And you can be used as a gift, especially for, like I said, something like osteoporosis or it just osteopenia. It's a really good sign symptom. So let's go. Okay. So let's get me well. How gorgeous your hair is. So how, 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 how bad was your, was your situation? Um, I was, it was coming out in handfuls. I lost about 50% of my hair. Wow. Was really, I don't Over, have any pictures. I didn't want to take it. <laughs> Over how long a period of time was that? Um, over about, wow, six months. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, well, now yeah. you have gorgeous hair and it's so wonderful. Oh, thanks. You yeah. Know, have I mean, these things, these things turn into a blessing where now you helped yourself and you also are helping the world. Okay. So let's get back to my original question. So what are the most common root causes that you see that are underlying this when people dig deep and figure it out? So inflammatory, hormonal, digestive, which includes nutrition and, but digestive, are you absorbing your nutrients? per se. And then stress induced. So really those are all the same as bone loss. Exactly. So someone who's listening and they're saying, oh gosh, that's me. So it's handfuls. It's not a little bit that's coming out. So number one, is that the definition where you need to take action? You know, like when No, no, it's I mean you'll see it in the shower. If you're it's normal to lose, you know, a hundred hairs a day. That's normal. But if you're losing like a hundred, 150 a day on a, on a norm, you know, for months on end, that's abnormal. And you'll see it. I mean, it'll be in your brush. It'll be in the shower. It'll be in your bathtub. It'll come out in your hands. It'll be on your pillow. I mean, it was everywhere. It was here, there, everywhere. <laughs> okay, you'll so know. Yeah. So people who are listening and they say, okay, yes, that sounds great, Julie. I would like a more natural approach. Where do they start? What's step one? Step one is first doing some functional labs to figure out what type of hair loss you have because there's different types. There's stress-induced hair loss that's more like the telogen effluvium where um, you're you're under so much stress that your um, your hair goes into resting mode prematurely. So it just is like, I have too much else to deal with in my body. I'm so stressed that my hair's the, the last to get the love. So it actually just, it just stops growing because there's three phases of hair growth and it, it goes into that, that resting phase prematurely. So there's that, and that's what the, the COVID shed is. They, they're calling it the chronic telogen effluvium, a stress-induced type of hair loss. But the good thing about that is um, it normally comes back. And then there's the autoimmune type of hair loss. Uh, now, all hair loss is called alopecia, but it's, it's the um, different types of autoimmune alopecia, like areata 
is what uh, Jada Smith has. That is definitely an autoimmune. And that usually starts, you'll see like coin size um, fall out. You know, women can pull up their hair and you see like round bald spots. Um, so there's that. And and then um, hormonal, and at that, some of these, you can also, hormonal often is because obviously your your hormones are out of whack or your your uh your dht testosterone is elevated it's going down the wrong path and then it often happens when you're stressed out so there's overlaps here and then of course i think the most important one is if you're not absorbing your nutrients and that was initially how mine started because i didn't know i had this major gluten problem and i ended up being anemic and so I was eating like a horse, but I was not absorbing it. I I didn't know. You know, I was just, I had a, <laughs> Margie, I worked in the media. I worked at Warner Brothers. I, I worked in the media and I had a very high, high uh, go, go, go lifestyle. I would, I mean, I was, you know, late night parties and, you know, it was crazy. And it wasn't until um, actually, my mother was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer um, and was going into emergency surgery the next day. And so I moved back to my hometown of Denver. And when I was trying to figure out why she got so sick, I finally slowed down. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm putting blinders on my own health. And it was during that transition that I finally paid attention because that's when my hair started falling out, just clumps. So wow. sometimes it takes something major for people to be like, oh, okay, I need to pay attention now. And I found so many, I mean, I found out I was hypothyroidism, I had H. pylori. And again, it can be a bundle of things, just like bone health. You're not losing, you know, you're not losing your bone strength per se because of one thing. It's usually a myriad of, these top four that I put in these four functional categories because there's over 50 causes of hair loss per se. But I, I, I put them into these four functional categories that also, you know, doing a stool test, you know, any functional labs and uh, a lab that can see what nu nutrients you're deficient in or even surplus of nutrients. You can get too much of say selenium or even magnesium. And it gets your balance, your body out of balance. Even biotin, which is in every hair supplement, drives me crazy. But you can get too much of that. Um, and how would someone know? Just from the, I guess, I thought the micronutrient testing, they would see that, mm -hmm. that they have too much biotin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, is that something common that you see? Too much magnesium and too much biotin? <laughs> uh, it's not common, but I do see it. I do see it. Wow. In fact, wow. yeah, um, I, I, I know of a another client's client or per se that um, went into a health food store, didn't listen to his practitioner and thought, oh, more is better. So he took a ton of magnesium and ended up in the ER. Oh, my. Yeah, no, it's true. Sometimes people think more is better. That happens a lot with calcium, you know, just more, 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 more. And we know that's not the case. Something that's very, that's very important in this community with bone health that I see all the time, as do other practitioners, is, is gluten, you know, issues with gluten, whether it's celiac or just, and I mean, obviously more, we see way more of just people who have sensitivities to gluten and wheat. And that's interesting that you see that a lot as well with hair loss. Right. Also, because gluten can cross-react with some other foods and actually can put that hair follicle, uh, it can actually damage the hair follicle. And I have some great before and after pictures of, um, it, it's a study published in PubMed. It's a 14-year-old boy, and he literally had no hair. and he went on a gluten-free diet just for a year, full head of hair, just a year. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. And how long? And I know you... that, you know, go ahead. No, no, no. Continue. Well, and I also know that um, osteopenia, osteoporosis is often 
silent and is because of silent celiac disease. And that's what it's traced back to. Because how can they absorb their nutrients? They can't. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, and, and that's known. The celiac disease is known. Most practitioners will test for celiac, but it's such a small percentage of the population. Whereas, you know, people who have issues with gluten is a very large percentage. And and a lot of men, those people are unfortunately missed. But it's interesting to see how many also have hair loss. Yeah, that you're saying that that's a common cause of, you know, you, you see that a lot. Sure. And even H. pylori, which makes it so that you have a hard time absorbing your nutrients. And uh, um, Dr. Tom O'Brien, who you know, shared on my summit some before and after pictures of someone who had H. pylori. It was a succession of like eight pictures. He was pretty much lost almost all his hair. And then he got the H. pylori under control. Again, full head to hair succession of eight before and after pictures. Wow. So step yeah. one is really doing a deep dive with a functional medicine practitioner or getting the functional labs and seeing what the root cause is. And I think that's important for everything. I, mean, I know with osteoporosis, because otherwise you're just masking it, as you said. So that's step one. So I guess depending upon what you find depends on the treatment and how long it will take. Sure, sure. And and also removing those toxins um, is my first, I go through the five, five R approach. So the first approach is usually takes the longest. It's the most important. And you're removing the toxins from the environment, the GI tract, and also, you know, emotional or, you know, toxins could be a bad job, a bad relationship per se, because that all has an effect on your hair health, your bone health, because it um, causes that inflammation. It causes you not to be able to absorb those nutrients. It just, they're finding out more and more how important it is to get that stress under control because it it's, now they're saying that you know, there's of course stress induced hair loss. Stress plays a huge role in bone loss, but every disease, even they're even saying it plays a role in cancer. So I don't know where I'm not gonna go there today, but <laughs> yeah, I can uh, agree with you yeah. more. I mean, that's that's <laughs> such a huge piece of all the work I do. And I just see it very transformative. And as you said, you know, sometimes it's a good thing if you've lost your hair or you're losing bone, it wakes you up. And to, to just look at your lifestyle and see where you may be crazy, <laughs> you know, or you're so stressed out and you didn't realize that this is having damaging effects on your body. And, and once, you, once you make the changes and change the lifestyle, everything gets better and your hair comes back, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And so, also, so, okay, so finish the five, finish what you were saying about the five ways, you know, you said there's oh, five pieces that you look at and deal with. Sure. So. Uh, um, remove, replace, re-inoculate, repair, and rebalance. So the replace and the re-inoculate can be different because SIBO can cause hair loss. When someone has SIBO, they can't have those um, certain probiotics makes it worse. You know, you have to go with like spore-based probiotics. There, there's some probiotics now made, especially for SIBO. Um, and then re-inoculate, you know, you have to stay away from most all the fermented foods until they get their SIBO under control. So I, I get, you know, this is a framework, but um, it is different for everyone. That's why it's important to do functional labs before you go through, you know, growing back your hair. You don't want to go down a rabbit hole the wrong way or wasting time or money. Okay. Yeah. And how long do you, what, what's the time frame? I know it's very different depending upon what you're dealing with. I guess, I guess once something is improved, you know, once you've improved it, how long, what, what have you seen, you know, to, to start seeing improvements with the hair growth? I've seen my, some of these ladies have told me that they've seen their hair completely <laughs> grow back within 90 days. Um, um, one of my clients, she she said, I, um, she's like, my hairdresser can't believe it. She had to go in like 
more often than she did before because her hair was just growing back so much. Um, but it, uh, that's that's a short time frame. It, it, it normally takes longer. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of people, what are things that everybody, like everybody listening, what are some things, are there certain things that just people could do to you know help with their hair and just help keep a healthy scalp? that, you know, that everybody listening can do? Are there some good things? Sure. It's just start with the basics. Get in that good nutrition. Get in 20 grams of protein at every meal. And get in those, those vegetables that have the fiber. And drink half your body weight in ounces of water a day. And move <laughs> and, you know, Assess your sleep so you're getting good quality sleep every night. You can't heal anything if you're not getting that quality sleep. It's going to get your blood sugar out of balance. I mean, that's another thing with hair loss. It's, you know, women with PCOS or diabetes or um, if they're insulin resistant, it's it's really hard to grow, grow your hair because you've got so much inflammation going on. Um, so the, the basics, and I, I like to keep it simple. I call it PFC. That's protein, quality protein, fats, healthy fats, and carbs. That's complex carbs. Complex carbs. So that's not. Explain that. So if people listening may not understand what that actually means, the complex carbs. So complex carbs are really vegetables. um, And the. The reason they're complex is because you want to eat them in their their, their skin. They have the, the skin and they slow down the digestive process. Whereas simple carbohydrates is bread, cereals, you know, grains, and they're they turn into sugar right away in your system. You might as well just eat a candy bar. <laughs> in fact, like eating a Snickers bar with the, the peanuts or the nuts or whatever is in them. Um, is really the same as having a piece of bread or pasta or, you know. So so complex carbs is, I think, vegetables, and it's not so much fruit um, because fruit does normally have a lot of sugar. The best fruit are blueberries. They're highest in antioxidants but uh, and highest, you know, they have the fiber and lowest in sugar. So um, just make it simple. Every time you eat, half your plates of vegetables, good quarter size and that quality protein and, and you know, cook with and garnish your food with those healthy fats. And it's really important to pay attention to all, all three of those and get quality ones because if you're eating conventional meat, you know, poultry, eggs, you're getting all those hormones and antibiotics and all those nasty things. The same with the vegetables. You know, try to eat organic, but, and getting that the the water. I mean, people dehydration is very common, especially as we get older, because our our we just don't sense when we're thirsty. So, the rule of thumb, like I said earlier, is half your body weight in ounces of water a day. And you see, that makes a big difference. That the dehydration could really exacerbate hair loss. It, it can, but just your whole, it aids in your digestion and detoxification. I mean, um, in the remove process, you know, I do labs to see if they're detoxing properly. Are they methylating properly? Because if they're, if they're not, then they're going to have a, you know, buildup of bad estrogen or bad this or that. And you have to, you have to remove to open you know close one door to open the other one (laughs) and you that's why it's important to work with a practitioner to go in those steps or you can really again like what you do you can end up they can end up wasting a lot of the time and money if they try to google it and do it on their own i mean yeah (laughs) absolutely now in terms of lifestyle practices that you know Like, does it matter your sheets? Does it matter? Are there anything that people can do also to help with their hair? 
Right. So um, going back to kind of what you do, getting the nutrients to your scalp, circulate into your scalp. That's another reason, you know, we have an epidemic. There's 80 million people in 2020 in just United States, 80 million that experienced hair loss. But anyway, so doing like a down dog or a handstand or a headstand, you know, getting that those nutrients to your scalp every day, just a couple minutes. And there's plenty of exercises that that you you know about that you can get you know, or massaging your scalp, just getting, you know, it's it's like it's like bones or it's a living thing. And our scalp hair follicles is the newly discovered microbiome. And it requires an enormous amount of energy. It actually has the third highest cellular turnover in the body. So of course you need those nutrients to absorb. You need to get them in the first place. And if you're not absorbing or not, you, you need an enormous amount of, again, energy and nutrients for your scalp microbiome. It's the, I call it the forgotten organ. Because, it, and it is an organ, but it gets the, that's to get the love like the, the vital organs, of course, to keep us alive. But if you're so out of balance that everything's just going to those vital organs to keep you alive, including your bones, <laughs> then your hair, you know, it's the last, the last thing that gets the love. <laughs> but yet people um, really care about the hair. The truth is people yeah. care very much about how they look. So I think they care. I think they just don't know. I don't think... Uh, Am I right about that? Like, why don't, I think people see treatment, but a lot of times they're just getting the Band-Aid treatment. I, I, they I are. Right? People care. People people aren't happy if they're losing their hair. <laughs> oh, especially women start yeah. our crown glory. And then back to answer your question as well, uh, silk pillowcases retain 43% of the moisture in your hair and skin, plus they feel great. So that's a, a little hack. And make sure you get silk, though, not satin. They're marketing the satin pillowcases. You want silk. And, um, uh, yeah, so that's another little hack. And uh, I, I don't have it with me, but there's there's this 28-prong scalp massage thing that you can buy. Oh, I've buy. seen those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's on my website, but it feels great. And that's something you can do every day. Oh, just to get and the blood just, circul just to get circulation in the head. Yeah, so interesting. Are there any essential like, oils or anything that you recommend? You know, anything natural that people so let's say somebody has hair loss and they're going to start doing the functional test, but they don't want to keep losing their hair. So are there any alternatives to the medication? You know, is there anything they can do temporarily while they're starting to work on all these root causes? So the pillow, they can get a silk pillow, number one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Start doing all the good eating things that you've talked about. Number two, is there any other things? They yeah, can getting add? getting that circulation to your head. Also, topically, essential oils can help stimulate um, the follicles, especially peppermint and rosemary. Those are the top two. And how would you use that? How would you, you know, what's the best way to use those essential oils? I think getting some good emu oil. Emu oil, you can use that as a base or castor oil, but I think emu oil, there's some studies that says that helps with the um with the scalp health. You can put it in that instead of just putting the putting that rosemary or peppermint just straight is a little bit harsh on your scalp. So putting it in a base of emu oil. If, if people don't have that, because that's not not that easy to come by. Emo, emo oil is also very rich in um, vitamin K2. Interesting. Um, but if they can't get that, is is any carrier oil? Like would coconut oil be okay? Olive or oil. Olive, olive oil, oil. That would all be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so you're in the shower. Like what exactly? Would you, you'd mix it with the oil. And it would be best to put it on at night. And then when you take a shower, say in the morning, then it absorbs all night. Okay, and just put a cap on your head so you don't ruin mm -hmm. your silk pillowcase. <laughs> <laughs> you buy this expensive silk pillowcase and then it's... 
Yeah, or at least put it on for a couple hours beforehand. Because if you just put it on for five minutes, it's not going to do much. It needs right. To so just just putting it in the shower isn't really going to do much if you're if you're right. Just, it smells so good. I mean, the rosemary always always smells fantastic. And how often would you use that if if you're going, you know, trying that treatment? How often would you do it? Um, once to twice a week. Oh, okay. okay. And then I also want to point out that there's some topical products that can cause hair loss. In fact, there's about ten companies in lawsuits now. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna name off some of them. Um, Diva Curl. L'Oreal, Johnson & Johnson. Um, you can watch this uh, this show. It's called Not So Pretty. It's the fourth episode, and it talks about all these toxins that people are putting on their hair using as, you know, whatever, even shampoos, conditioners, styling stuff that is causing hair loss. So be careful. Make sure you get clean products that don't have all those nasty chemicals are gluten-free. Um, and some of the hair straighteners are, are causing cancer. So that's not the, that's, again, that's not the, that those are all Band-Aids anyway. So get down to basics, take care of your health and just get some clean products to wash your hair with. Do you recommend going to the environmental working group if people want to Check their products out. Where would would you say that would be one of the better? Where would you recommend? Yes, that's a great place. They have a whole segment on not only hair products but makeup and yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, it's concerning. Like, yeah, it's have very upsetting hair. if yeah. if you're you know trying to look good and here you're using something that can actually cause hair loss. That's that's very upsetting. So you're doing something really amazing. I want you to share about your summit because, you know, we're just touching on some of the topics, but there's so many areas to delve into. And I know, I know how hard it is putting a summit together. So why don't you share what, what you've done and what people can learn on the summit? Because, you know, there's just so, it's a big topic. And, and the, it, what's exciting to me is that there's so much that can be done. It's not okay. And I think people think they have to live with it and they don't. So share about what you, what's on the summit for people to learn. There is something for everyone to learn because like I said at the beginning, there's so many different causes of hair loss. So we, we go deep into so many different subjects. I mean, even like mast cell activation is a cause of hair loss. There's tons of studies. Mold. We have a mold expert. Um, we talk about digestive health, SIBO, bone health. I mean, there's so much correlation. Uh, bone health, of course, you're a featured speaker and, and um, Kevin L Ellis is another speaker on the summit. Um, gosh, I there's, <laughs> there's yeah, so no, many it's... topics we covered that, it, that you really just need to listen to it and maybe even get the transcripts because um, you it's you're everyone's different everyone's hair loss is different everyone's journey is different there's no one size size you know no one size fit, you know approach there's different approaches for different people different types of hair loss and that's what the summit covers it's all about natural approaches and getting your your body your your health into balance so you can naturally regrow hair but it it takes some investigation some detective work and that's what the summit represents as well. There's a lot of great resources. Um, yeah, what are the things when people? I, I mean, our our talk we discussed some of the you know even why osteoporosis medication can actually affect your hair. So it's you know it lot lots of things to know about. But it is so similar. This philosophy is so similar to with bones that you have to dig deep, figure it out, and when you do really wonderful things can happen. So it's just interesting how things will manifest itself. But I know you also, when you just for signing up, there are some good freebies people get. Can you share what some of those are? Sure. There's uh, there's a freebie on mold, on parasites, on uh, there's recipes, there's 
uh, digestive guides, there's supplement guides. Uh, I, That's great. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll, Go we'll ahead. Have, no, no, no. We'll have all the information for that. Well, I think you're really a role model. I mean, look at you with the hair. And what have you seen in your community? You've been doing this for quite a while now. Why don't you share some of the wonderful things that you've seen with when people do address the root cause and take your approach to hair loss? Well, they lose weight. They also meet all their other goals because they're getting their body into balance. And they're, they're pretty much like me. They finally decide to pay attention because of their hair loss. So they, they meet their other health goals. Um, their skin clears up their They lose weight. I mean, as far as like, are, but they usually have some, you know, internal imbalances going on. Their digestive health is usually a complete mess. We just get everything into order. Um, and the, the biggest thing and the biggest message too that I think bone health has is that you can do something naturally about hair loss as you can with bone health. You know, the big myth is, oh, I'm too old to, to do anything, especially about bones. Like people think bones are so stagnant and people think oh i have the genetics for hair loss well that's not th that's all a myth i mean i have studies where two identical twins one went bald the other great hair but they had different lifestyles they lived in different countries they and just like in bone loss hair loss is worse in the united states than anywhere else in the world why is that go back to the four main categories. People live these inflammatory lifestyles. They're not eating right or absorbing their nutrients. Their hormones are all out of whack and they're continually under stress and not managing it. So if anything, this summit will give you hope and guidelines to, to make the proper steps. And it's up to them. It's up to you if you want to do some work and and resolve this it, it, that's a bottom line we're giving you all the resources and information all right julie so you've done such a good job explaining all the root causes and what can happen when women lose their hair is it a little different with men it is different but it goes back to the basics and i also want to point out this abstract that i have this peer-reviewed published abstract and i have four studies on there and three are with men who were told they'd never grow their hair back. And this is another reason I'm so passionate about this subject, because all four of the subjects took what I call a gut reboot, but it was a fecal microbial transplant. They abbreviate FMT. And you can see the before and after pictures. Two of them had alopecia universalis over... That means they've lost hair over their entire body. You can see the before and after pictures. Wow, this that's one so guy interesting. Had no, no hair after, full head of hair. And my favorite on this study, there's a woman and she had lost all her hair up, up here, like a crown of hair. And then my favorite on this abstract, I, and I got the studies as PubMed studies, so anyone can look up these studies. It's not my patients but he was an 86 year old man so he had he had an alopecia spot you know those bald spots that men get and it all filled in just from getting his gut healthy so the point of having it in my abstract is that gut health matters yeah that's so interesting so for everyone if you don't know what the fecal transplant is is when they when <laughs> When they transplant your microbiome with, um, they put in your colon, actually, some very, very healthy um, stool, I guess is the best way. But regardless, it's going to give you a new microbiome. And they've been seeing unbelievable results when and just, just highlighting how important our gut is and microbiome. And they found that with the bones as well. That's so interesting. But I just want to ask you something, what you said before, if it's been a period of time that you haven't had hair and things have scarred, you said at that point that, you know, sometimes it's too late. Is there an actual, you know, for someone who's been bald for years? <laughs> well, that's why I love this study, because these 
men had been bald for years. Wow. So, so interesting. Yeah. Mm hmm. Wow. But you have to, you, there, you know, so FMTs are not that accessible. <laughs> like they are available in the United States, more so in Europe. But also, some people have, have taken them, like grown back their hair, gotten rid of this, that. I mean, they first started doing it for C. diff. But if they don't keep up that lifestyle, they're just going to regress back. Right. So it's really get down to the basics. And I just think that reinforces how important the gut is. And we, you know, deal with deal with all these symptoms that and go to the underlying root causes. Really wonderful things can happen. So, well, this has just been so great. Is there any last minute things you want to share? I think the summit sounds you know, just so wonderful, so many different speakers in so many different areas. I really enjoyed being one of your guests. And I just think that there's, you know, if you do have hair loss, find, figure it out because why, you know, why just be masking it when you can, you know, as you said, look what's happened to you and all the people that you work with. Right. I, I would say go listen to the summit with an open mind. It is the first summit ever done on a functional medicine and nutrition approach to hair loss. So the billion-dollar hair industry does not want you to know this, does not want you to hear this. And you might get pushed back. You know, I get pushed back on social media, but that's actually a good thing because I know that I'm bringing something to the forefront. People need to hear they need to hear this. They need to have hope. They need to have options because they don't have to go get a hair transplant, which by the way, most of them don't take anyway because that person's not healthy. So they'll spend all this money, to pay, very painful, I guess, to have a hair transplant. And months later, it all falls out. So this summit is really going to give you some deep dive options to not only grow your hair, but just improve your health. And that's why it's called Healthy Body, Healthy Hair, The Truth About Hair Loss. Oh, well, it's great. Well, I'm really excited for it. And I can't wait to hear all so many interesting speakers. And thank you so much for joining us and shedding light. And, and um, I look forward to staying in touch. Thank you so much, Margie. So, it's so nice being here. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Julie and have a better understanding of hair loss, what can be the root cause, and what can be done. And the good news is there's so much that we can do. I'm really excited about Julie's Summit because there's so many great speakers who are really going to look into all facets of hair loss and really share their experience. The link to that will be in the show notes. And if it's beyond the time of the summit, you can also just check out Julie's website for all sorts of resources. So thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.